when plastic is processed, several different materials must often be combined. But first, they must be dosed in the correct ratios. In this episode of Moe's Corner TV, we'll be looking at how and with what methods material is dosed. The tools used for dosing are called dosing devices. The type of dosing device that's used depends on several factors. We'll take a look at the most common types of dosing devices. The dosing screw is one of the oldest ways of conveying material. Its invention is attributed to the famous Greek engineer Archimedes, who lived around 250 BC. A disc dosing device, of which there are several types, doses material by transporting a defined volume of material in a rotating movement. The cone valve works with gravity. A cone closes or opens a material hopper. When open, the material can flow out of the hopper. It's related in this way to the dosing disc, which also uses gravity to allow or stop the flow of material. When choosing a dosing device, the type and quantity of material to be dosed is important. There are worse and better solutions. But joking aside, how precise must dosing be? Dosing devices play a central role in the dosing unit. The dosing devices ensure that material is transported from the material supply to the point where it's required. Choosing the correct dosing device depends primarily on the bulk material which you must handle. It's necessary to distinguish whether it's free-flowing, such as granules for example, or whether it's non-free-flowing, such as adhesive, cohesive powder. Non-free-flowing materials are deposited on the screw threads and therefore must then be handled by double screws. Free-flowing granules, on the other hand, can be dosed via single screws. In addition, sizing also plays a significant role because it directly influences the throughput which can be achieved. In a nutshell, choosing a dosing device depends on the material properties, the quantities of material that need to be processed and the accuracy required. Finally, you also need to consider whether processing will be continuous, extrusion for example, or cyclical such as injection molding. Materials in the plastics industry have many properties. In addition to the common granules, there are flakes, powders and liquids. Materials can also tend towards forming bridges. This is why planning is so important when choosing dosing devices. Will the machine only be processing granules or will liquids or powders also be used? Let's take a look at a practical example. Mo has invited his friends to breakfast. They all like coffee just as much as he does and he knows exactly how each of his guests prefer their coffee. Mo is always well prepared so he puts the coffee maker on. Alice takes her coffee black with a little sugar. The spoon is ideal for measuring out the sugar. Bob is watching his weight, so he prefers sweeteners. Two tablets, which can easily be dosed with the dispenser of the container. Claudia likes coffee with hot milk. Mo has already poured it into a milk jug from which she can dispense the ideal amount. And that's it. The result is perfect for each individual, because the appropriate dosing devices were used for the different materials and quantities. <laughs>